Yeah, I sculpt, therefore I'm a sculptor. Uh, I'm not real comfortable with that artist label. I've been to art events and I don't find myself terribly comfortable there. Uh, I'm far more comfortable hanging out with biker trash or racers or anything mechanical. You know, I like hot rods and motorcycles. I, I kind of look at this stuff as a way to capture a piece of history that's been totally ignored in, in the United States. Everybody knows Babe Ruth that would be a contemporary to these guys. This wasn't, you know, hit a ball and run around the bases. These were guys going around a track with no brakes, no transmission, doing 100 miles an hour, and when they crashed, they found the board that wasn't laid with the grain. When two, three-foot splinters would go through these guys' thighs and kill them on a regular basis. This was dangerous stuff, and I think when the country became more conservative and had prohibition and everybody wanted to be more sedate, this, you know, it fell out of grace. This is a book written by Stephen Wright. He's a good friend of mine. He's helped out a lot. As a matter of fact, that picture there was kind of what I was going after for this piece. See the five bikes racing and these two dueling neck and neck. This was a major piece of American pastime that now is literally lost. Look at this here. This is how they were built, neck and neck with death. And you literally had a chance of seeing a guy dying. Hell, you might have died yourself because they came around the track and up through the top and creamed the audience on a regular basis. I think too much is spent on the, on the Wild West in America, the pioneers coming west. Far more Model Ts brought people across this country than uh, covered wagons ever did. And uh, motorcycles are a far more relevant transportation than horses ever were. You know, the horse stinks, the thing you gotta take care of it, you know, it'll die, go away. It's good to make glue out of, I'll admit that. But the motorcycle, you know, centuries will go by and this is an important thing. I mean, the smell of gasoline is something beautiful. It's a, you admit it, when you go to the gas station, it's nice, you know what I mean? You walk past a farm, I mean, there's nothing nice about that. This is flat out at Bonneville. This is a sold out sculpture, probably the, the most popular piece that I've, I've done. Uh, this is a Rolly Free on a Vincent HRD setting the land speed record out at Bonneville. It's kind of a late piece for me, but it's got rich California and Utah and European history. And this is probably the most well-known motorcycle racing photo in existence. I'll gather up and do tons of information on, uh, you know, on, on historical aspect. But uh, actually, you can see him. He's in a he's in a little helmet and a bathing bathing suit, and um, he went 148 and he wanted to do 100 and a half. And his mechanic said that you know he'd better ease off the cheeseburgers or something because of the weight to horsepower ratio. And uh, so he took him literally and dropped his leathers, his boots, got into his swim trunks, went out, and got a few more miles an hour out of it, and uh, was happy with the day. I find myself falling into the trap of trading my stuff more than selling it so that I can get this kind of stuff. I mean, this is what makes me happy. I mean, I, I'm, I, I create a piece of sculpture, and, and you know, if somebody wants to trade me a motorcycle for it, I'm, I'm willing, you know. You know, you can go find a panhead, a knucklehead, a shovelhead. You can find it in any newspaper or any swap meet. What's fun to collect are the factory racers, the ones that were never sold to the public. This bike here is fun because growing up in California with a hot rodding dad, names like Von Dutch and Ed Roth, you know, Robert Williams, these guys were household names to me. Uh, maybe a more cultured family would be talking about Van Gogh. We were talking about Von Dutch. And this is a bike that he actually striped when he was working for Bud Eakins. Uh, if you've ever met my mother, you know I've got the best one. And uh, she always supported me in everything I did, but I've read books on the psychology of collecting, and uh, I think that you need a blanket if your mom didn't give you the, t the attention that you needed. And I think I was going through a developmental point in my life that I needed attention and never got it. So, you know, I'm over gratified with a teddy bear or a blanket. And now that I've grown up, I mean, there's something about a motorcycle that goes way beyond Christmas or a birthday. I mean, I got to have the thing. It's a need. And uh, I feel more complete when I bring it home. <laughs> How's that? Is that sick enough for you? You know, this is like the hill climber you saw out front, the slant artist cast in stainless steel and bronze. And so I try to keep as much of the process here in house as I can. And then whenever I'm bored of doing the uh, bronzes, which, you know, is, is too much of the time, I uh, spend it on building old bikes. And this here is a, a fun crocker, pretty rare bike. And I'm going to make a nice little bobber out of it, a fun little hot rod. I am I the only guy out there sculpting motorcycle race scenes? Yeah. I mean, I focus strictly on motorcycle race scenes, and there's not a whole lot of people out there that's focused on anything remotely like mine. Am I original? Certainly not. You've never met my dad or where I grew up around. I'm pretty much a product of my environment. I, I, I am what I was supposed to be. Am I a rebel? Am I original? No, I don't think so. I think I'm actually doing what I'm supposed to do in life, and uh, to me it's important.